Hi, I'm Tane Danger. This is... Jeez, it's Give to Gustavus Day. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's a rainy day here in Minnesota, but we are fired up coming to you all live from Cease Eckhoff Alumni Hall here on campus. Uh, for those of you who I've not met, I am Angela Erickson, class of 2001, Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement here at Gustavus. Tim, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Great to see you. I'm Tim Kennedy. I'm the Vice President for Marketing and Communication and a proud graduate of the class of 1982. Good morning, everybody. I'm Thomas Young, proud member of the class of 1988, uh, serve as the Vice President for Institutional Advancement. It's great to see everybody, and I can already see that there are people awake from coast to coast, so we hope you're enjoying today's broadcast. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. President Bergman here. Uh, so excited for the day we have in front of us. This, I think it's my favorite day of the year. And we've got so much fun stuff in store for gusties around the world today. Yeah, yeah, excited to get going. It feels like a good day. Um, you know, a year ago, I was looking through some of the notes from last year. And last year, in the middle of COVID, we said we still have to do Give to Gustavus Day. Oh, but we want to do it a little differently than we maybe would have under normal circumstances. Now, folks tuning in can see that we're a little bit closer to being back to normal. And more than one person on at a time. <laughs> that's exactly yes. right. Yeah. So that's fun. But there's a lot of things going on on campus. There's a lot of buzz, and uh, we're really excited to bring a lot of that to folks today. We have got a jam-packed schedule with interviews, folks from different departments and areas across campus to give folks out there, coast to coast, around the world, uh, a glimpse into what's happening on campus and what we're so fired up about. You know, it's so exciting. This day brings so many things together about what's great about Gustavus. I did, I think, mention, I uh, wanted to mention that I think it's really appropriate that we're uh, coming to you live from Cease Eckhoff mm -hmm. Alumni Hall. Uh, really one of the great uh, individuals that talked about how Gustavus um, impacts the world from way back um, and, I, and was such a mentor to me. I uh, really want to say a shout out to Cease. You're up there. I know you're looking down on us today. <laughs> really excited to be here coming from this hallowed place from a man that really had such a tremendous impact on this institution. Well, and it's Cease's legacy that is really baked into this day, mm -hmm. right? Cease was all about alumni giving, alumni participation, alumni engagement. Engagement. And whether it's alumni and parents and friends, right, that definition has maybe been a little bit expanded over the years. But that's what this day is all about. It's bringing the campus to folks, no matter where they are, inviting them to come along with us uh, and be part of what's going on here at Gustavus. And I think that would make Cease proud for sure. Yeah, I think it would. I think he would be uh, excited to think about raising $500,000 in one day, which is our financial goal. But equally importantly, we're looking for 1,250 donors today. And if you go on to the Give to Gustavus Day website, you can see how you do that. It's really, really set up beautifully as it has been for the last couple of years. But choose your dollar amount and then choose the various challenges that you want to be a part of. You can vote for as many as apply to you. So don't be shy. Click on all of them if they all apply, <laughs> and you'll see that there's a running tally. I think you can see on our screen right now, uh, we're, we're featuring Gustavus omelets this morning as our first go-round. Uh, and then there's uh, different opportunities uh, to support faculty and staff, support our students. Uh, are you a new or long-lasting uh, lost donor? Uh, click on the uh, challenge that applies to you, and then you can see when we get to those goals, the various dollar amounts that will roll into our overall total, which is already approaching $10,000. And we already have over 20 states on our 50-state challenge, which is really, really exciting and a terrific start. Do you want to say something about some of our guests that will be here today, Angela? Oh, gosh, yeah, I'd be happy to. It, uh, you know, it's a great lineup that we have. It's always a lot of fun to bring folks across campus that are doing the good work, the Mission Center work of the college, here on stage to chat a little bit about what's going on in their areas. Uh, a couple of pieces that come to mind to, for me, I want to know what's happening in the lives of our students uh, and in the lives right. of faculty. Uh, we've got Brenda Kelly coming on in a little bit uh, as provost to talk a little bit about faculty, how they've navigated COVID, uh, how things are going this semester and this year. They've got some really exciting changes that they've made to the curriculum that I know she's really eager to chat with us about. 
Uh, on the flip side of that, we've got some students, and you know, you mentioned a little bit ago, Tom, international flair. Uh, this evening, uh, we've got a few of our international students that are going to come and visit. I get to visit you with them. You get to visit with them. Yep. Yeah, uh, one of them is a student worker in our office. She's absolutely wonderful from Vietnam. Uh, but you know, it's just really interesting to think about what has life been for like for our students on campus over this last year and a half. Things have been weird. Uh, you know, now we're kind of kicking it back into a you know relatively normal gear and you know especially visiting with some of those international students I mean they've had challenges along the way and getting here and staying here and what's happening in their corners of the world while all of these things that have been swirling in our uh, in our culture and our universe have been you know on the minds of so many so it that'll be an interesting conversation it's gonna be a sure. terrific day of friends yeah. from all I, around I campus. think it's so fun because we get to really share campus the people here they get to see who's involved mm -hmm. with these activities they get to hear from them what they're doing a and after uh, you know 18 months of kind of being separate everybody's back you can feel the energy and it's so exciting for what's happening and we're really excited to share that with you yeah First I agree I think it's all about the connections right yeah. we're back here on campus we have reopened the connections between people amongst our students mm -hmm. And it feels so good. And here we are connecting with the world. Yeah. Uh, and boy, does that feel great. Um, we haven't been on the road as much. Right. So this is a great way for us to connect with alumni and friends of the college everywhere, all at once. And boy, that is exciting. Uh, boy, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah, I fired up. You know, Tom, I'm glad that you mentioned some of the details about today. You know, when, when we were planning for today, you know, the four of us, we've done this before. And it feels a little bit old hat, which is fun. Uh, you know, so we just kind of get to walk in and we feel confident that we can execute this day. We know, especially given that one of the challenges that we've got today is new and long lost owners, that we're reaching out to everybody. And Absolutely. when I say everybody, I mean everybody. And we want as many people as possible to be contributing to this day. So I do want to make sure that people understand kind of what's going on here. The goal, like you said, Tom, $500,000, 1,250 donors for the day. We want to unlock these challenges, right? So if people pop onto the website and they're taking a look at what's going on, first they choose the dollar amount that they want to give. And it could be a dollar, it could be five dollars, it could be twenty-five dollars, it could be much larger than that. Can it be Any, a million dollars? It could be a million, million bucks. Boy, I want to know who's we go. got a credit card that'll <laughs> allow for that. That'd be fantastic. No matter the dollar amount, <laughs> right? You then, after you choose your dollar amount, you get a chance to click on as many of these challenges as you'd like. Right, like you said, Tom, any of these that apply to you. You don't have to do just one per transaction. You can do multiple. So if you love Gusty Goodies, if you remember some of those amazing foods that came out of the calf, click on that. If you're a parent, you don't have to be a parent of a Gusty student. Any parent, click on that challenge. If you're a member of the 50-year club, click on that one too. So you can click as many challenges as you want. You know, then you push the button, you go through, and you, you know, handle the credit card transaction. And poof, all of your numbers get added into those challenge totals. And what gets exciting throughout the day, I think what one of the many things that's fun about the day is once those challenges start being met, right? Once we cross those thresholds of numbers of donors in those categories, then those big pots of money start to tip into that total. That's and then right. that number grows really Even quickly. faster. Yeah. Yeah, the, you bet. The other exciting thing today that's a new uh, variation. One, we've got our Gusty Treats, our favorite foods. But also, we've got a shout out to Gusties around the world. Right. And I can see already on our board I that know. we have gifts from Japan and from Australia. That's and awesome. our goal is to have 10 additional countries represented. So we'll keep track of that during the course of the day. But thanks, folks, in Japan and Australia. And I'm imagining India ought to get posted relatively soon, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> well, and for those of you that are listening who know <laughs> folks around the world, right. today's the day. I mean, maybe you haven't connected with those folks for a while and you're like, gosh, I remember that so-and-so moved yeah. to wherever. I mean, if there was ever a day for you to get connected with someone you haven't visited with in a while, this would be the day. Encourage them to give. We'll pop that flag up and it'll be a blast. It's going to be an exciting day, Angela. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope that you'll stay on and engage with us throughout the entire day. And we also want to just really quickly shout out to the individuals that made this amazing set. Matt Doblesinski, Barb Larson-Taylor, so many others have made this happen today. Mm -hmm. uh, Ann Sponberg-Peterson, just so many people. Thank you for everything that everyone's done to make this happen. We sit here and do 
do the easy part. That's right. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, we're going to toss it over to a video for a couple minutes, and then you're going to be back and I'll visiting back. a little bit more, updating folks on what's going on on campus. Love it. Sounds Perfect. good. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Let's day. Good to see you. Good morning. Go good Gusties. morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Tane Danger. This is Give to Gustavus Day, and I'm standing here with Lily Kingsley, Audrey Octrip de Carroll, and Andrea James. Andrea James. And obviously. So we're here uh, at Big Hill Farm, and this, I understand, is where all of the food for Gustavus is grown. Not exactly. <laughs> we do grow um, lots of produce over the summer and into the fall, and we sell it to the cafeteria. So a little bit of the food in the cafeteria is from here. That is good. So like most of what we will be eating for the rest of the day is pumpkin and owl meat. Correct. Right. Yeah. That's good. No, tell me more because it's like beautiful out here. I mean, we're at the end of the season, it yeah. seems like. We're mostly eating pumpkins and um, and zinnias, right? That like, would be correct. So yeah. Absolutely. So I tell like who all is out here working and doing stuff? Well, the farm is entirely student run. Wow. Um, previously, it was just a farm. Now it's expanded to a student org that's active during the school year rather than just the summer. Um, so this summer, for example, myself and two other interns, Emily Gerenser and Josie Kleckner, Good name were job. putzing around. Uh, we worked from June to still working currently. As you can see, there's still things to be picked. Um, and all of that food we produce, like Lily said, goes straight to the calf. And then during the school year, our org plans fun events, plans what will be growing the next year, and hires new interns for the next summer. Look at a, uh, a squash. Actually, uh, that no. is a dead cucumber. It's rotted. We're at the end of the season. We are at the <laughs> end of the season. See, you can tell. This is totally unscripted. This is real. Like, I just picked up a dead. That's fine. Anyway, so, uh, I, I don't know. What do you all learn, like, what, by doing this? I mean, obviously, you learn which pumpkins are the cutest. Definitely yeah, lots of hands-on skills. Yeah. Um, so obviously skills that include planning out a farm, um, planning what to grow where and when to grow it um, to make the soil be the best quality for where we're at. Yeah. Um, and then lots of other skills like appreciating nature, um, getting out here. We also focus on food justice and um, sustainable agricultural practices. Um, to get to know that a little bit more, so. Yeah. Oh, can you just tell me quickly about like so what sustainable agriculture practices like out here? Like what some of those are that you all are practicing? Yeah, so we are not certified organic, but we don't use any pesticides or herbicides on our vegetables. So by definition, they are organic. Uh, besides that, we do crop rotation. So mm. these plants won't stay in this spot next year. We'll rotate them to another plot. Um, and that ensures that the nutrients that these plants took out from the soil this year won't continue to be drawn out and the soil has the opportunity to regenerate and stay as healthy as possible. Additionally, we do uh, low to no tilling, which involves uh, softening up the earth and drying it out and that can cause soil erosion. Um, and beyond that, we just try and plant pollinator friendly plants. That's why we have a prairie. Um, yeah, and there's a myriad of different practices that you can employ, uh, but we don't have to get into all of those right now. No, that's very cool. And uh, just, I, I'm going to walk into the brush here in a second, but be, while I'm doing that, can you just say uh, a little bit about uh, some of the, I don't know, experiences you've had? Because you've both been working here for like a while now. So like, I don't know, do you have any favorite memories of working mm. on the farm? Yeah, so my first year at Gustavus, there you go. <laughs> and on in. You get us a pepper. You keep talking. Oh, good. Yeah. So my first year at Gustavus, um, the first club meeting I ever went to was a Big Hill Farm meeting. And my mom always likes to remind me of this story of, I called her walking to the meeting. I'm so scared to go. Like, I don't know if people are going to like me. Like, I don't know if I should even be in this club. And so um, I was really anxious. And then I went there and James and Andrea, who are... Um, Owl is named after just <laughs> made me feel really welcome um, and eventually this kind of became my favorite club favorite place to be on campus um, and so it was really cool like feeling like I had a place at Gustavus surrounded by people um, who were like me and who were just generally awesome like Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well that is very cool. Uh, should we, do you want a habanero? No, that's an extremely spicy pepper and I don't want that right now. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you both very much for talking to us. Uh, thank you for showing us around end of the season, Big Hill Farm. I am gonna steal this pumpkin. Go right ahead. Uh, but I hope that you all are watching and uh, your support today is supporting really cool, amazing things like this. So uh, help us make Gustavus 
grow. Oh, ow. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, you can get uh, some milk. Ah, uh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I can smell that. Anyway, <laughs> oh, <God>. my mouth. <laughs> Goodbye. It's over. The shot is over. Welcome back. So good to have you here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tim Kennedy. I'm the Vice President for Marketing and Communication, and I am here with President Rebecca Bergman. So President great Bergman. to be here. Boy, so much is happening on campus. Yeah. It is a really exciting time, and nothing like little Tane Danger to get us started off on yes, the day. Yes, no kidding. Uh, you know, what a great little video from Big Hill Farm. Yes, yeah, it, it was, was a great, great summer. Oh, for the was. Big Hill Farm, and I think that kind of segues us into, you know, what a great summer it was here on campus for us to think that we were going to have everybody back right. and, and really do things the way at Gustavus we love to do them. Would I you know, like to talk about what's happened there? Tim, it's so great to see there's energy on campus, and it's palpable. I mean, it's really quite noticeable because we're back in person the restrictions related to COVID have come way down. Yes. We are 94% vaccinated. Like, can you let's celebrate that? that. Can we celebrate it that? Is, that's yeah, unbelievable. You bet. And that's yeah. employees and students. Yeah. So that means that we can ex we can have guests on campus. It means we're having events. Yay! Music events, athletic events, and we're just happy. I mean, you can see it. Uh, it does feel so good, and, and you walk around campus, and, and everybody's also been doing a great job of wearing masks inside bet, to make sure yeah. that we're safe we're and in careful. the classroom. Oh, yes. But at the same time, the numbers have been very low. The planning for everyone to be here together, the students are allowed in the dorms to really interact and make sure that they're enjoying that social part of what makes Gustavus so great. That's right, and we've had such a beautiful fall. Uh, yeah, we know it's a little rainy today, but there's none of that white stuff on the ground yet. So and, and it's unbelievable. People, yeah, people are outside and just enjoying campus. It's beautiful here, beyond words. It is, and you get to see that on our That's set right. right behind us. It is another extraordinary fall. It is. We've had great weather. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, some people... President Bergman have not been able to be on campus for the last 18 months. And it's actually the physical appearance of the place has changed. We've added some great new buildings and, yeah. and all kinds of fun things are happening. Would you like to talk about one of the really exciting things that happened in the new Nobel renovation and expansion? I was wondering if you were thinking about Nobel first because Nobel Hall of Science and the connection to the theater and the fine arts building it's in full swing. We have brand new laboratories, including a laboratory theater. So, you know, we've connected via a, a connection between the Nobel Hall and the fine arts, physical connection, but really it's about the liberal arts. We have a food court the in steamery. Nobel Hall, the steamery. How appropriate. Yeah, how appropriate. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And that's really what we're trying to create there. A, a hub on campus that connects students and faculty uh, with each other. Uh, and it's really about the liberal arts. So that's quite fun. Uh, the interdisciplinary uh, part of that right. building, the way it was designed from the very beginning, the faculty, Brenda Kelly was on the original team, our current provost, and all of the things that they tried to do to bring in the arts and make sure that faculty could gather there and teach and students, the classrooms you were bet. designed so that they could interact in a way that they hadn't been able to before. The pedagogy has changed. The faculty are teaching in a way that really pushes to the future. It is really exciting it, to it see. It is stated the art. I mean, I think this is a building that Gustavus community all over the world can be very proud of. And when we say it really truly is one of the finest facilities in the country, we're not exaggerating. I mean, people have told us it's already won several awards for its design. It um, we're really excited about that. And now, as oh, we're in using project, that building, right. of course, you we, can't be sitting on your hands, right? Talk to right. us about so, what's new. New project. Uh, we have an expansion and major renovation going on in Lund Center and we can see that uh, happening on campus. In the section between the original Lund building and the football stadium, there's a new wedge that is 
coming along. And in fact, just about closed in. That will include fitness facilities, both cardio and strength training. It will include new locker rooms, new offices for our coaches, and a student lounge that we've never had in Lund before. Uh, and it's coming along greatly. You know, what do you think about what's so happening So it's unbelievable. There? We just got the glass in, so the building is going to be covered. They're starting to do the work through the winter time. I think that the opportunity also for students, uh, this building, the whole design was so that it's all about wellness. It's about health. Our students, yes. they're coming here, and that's really important to them. And we want to make sure that they have the best facilities in the country to do that. And then and the view oh. is spectacular as it's you look great. out. You're looking out over the, the stadium and then the arboretum and the yeah. back fields. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, so they'll be beginning the interior work. The project is slated to be finished in April. So this year's students will get to occupy it and test it out, which is, just sounds so great. And then uh, we're on deck to start phase two of the project uh, after April, and that will be a major renovation yes. in the existing building including in the forum, which we're very excited about. Yeah, it is going to look completely different, and I think it will be so welcoming, not only to our students and our student athletes, but also to those coming to campus to view those activities to take part in the facility. So we're excited that the new buildings really have created a lot of energy on campus. And now we're thinking about what's coming up next. What is the great activity that happens every year around Christmas time, yeah. but Christmas in Christ Chapel. Christmas in Christ Chapel is going to be live with people in the chapel. Woohoo! Yay! How about that? That's so exciting. So that feels great. Our theme this year is we shall go forth singing. And what appropriate <laughs> way to celebrate being together uh, with the pleasure of music uh, and our choirs and our orchestra and the dance folks are amazingly excited to be able to sing to you. Uh, if you can come to campus, do so. We'll be live streaming on Saturday night. Yes. This happens December what? December 2, two. 3, 4, and 5. Tickets are on sale. On Monday to on the Monday. public. They go on sale to the public on Monday. We invite you to go online, gustavus.edu, and it'll be right there on the main page where you can get to Christmas in Christ Chapel tickets. We would love to have you all come back and celebrate Christmas with us in the Gustavus way, which is an amazing tradition. Yeah, please check it out. So we're excited. It's going to, again, this day is going to be amazing. We already talked about Lund. Tom Brown's going to be here to talk oh, about good. that in more detail. Brenda Kelly will talk about Lund in more detail. Uh, excuse me, Nobel. Nobel. So I think we're just really going to be uh, having an exciting day. So thanks for kicking it off with me here Happy and to talking be here. about all the amazing things that are happening on campus. Let's go, Gusties. Go, Gusties. Hello, I'm Tane Danger. I'm here to talk about the Gustavus podcast, and I have actually the man to talk to about it, Professor Greg Castor. Hello. Hello, Zane. Thank you. Nice to be here. It is very exciting to be here with you. Uh, can you tell me? I'm trying to do my best podcasting voice. <laughs> can you tell me about the Gustavus podcast? I sure can. Yeah, so it started in this very space. Uh, you're, in, you're, in a, you're in an important space here. This is the studio where it began in March 2020. Uh, that was the first, I think it was the first recording. Uh, and then a few days later, we had to skedaddle due to something called COVID-19. Never heard of it. Yeah, Don't want to think about I, it. I'll bring you up to date in a bit. Um, it was an idea that I had in my head and then it was an idea that was reinforced by J.J. Aiken, by um, a colleague who said to me after I did, a, 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 not a podcast interview, but an interview with Warren Beck mm. uh, over, uh, and this is Beck Hall, um, uh, Warren Beck was a history major, he said to me, you ought to, you ought to think about doing a podcast. And then Angela Erickson, turned out she had a similar idea, she and I met for lunch, and it just kind of went from there. Uh, Matthew Dobosensky, JJ, really, really. I like many of these people. They're all good people. They're, yeah, mostly. Yeah, they all know what they're doing. And then alum Will Clark, who uh, graduated a couple of years ago, does all the tech stuff for us. So I've done almost 80 some episodes. What is what what is the Gustavus podcast? What's yeah. the pitch for? Learning for life at Gustavus. 
So that's a little twist on lifelong learning, right? Learning for life. I mean, how to learn to live a rewarding, enriching life, right? Um, and I interview, I started out, I would go and interview just sort of Gustavus people only, that is people currently at Gustavus, but it's branched out to alumni, it's branched out to distinguished guests who come to Gustavus. So uh, just yesterday, uh, Ursula Linkus, my colleague in Scandinavian Studies, she was interviewing the Out of Scandinavia uh, speaker this year. So anyone's fair game. I mean, I could, I'm, you're an alum, so I'm going to be interviewing yeah. you. Oh, wow. But maybe, you know, I mean, someone's, let's say your grandmother set foot on campus, right? <laughs> she's fair game, too. <laughs> well, I'll let Grandma know. <laughs> yeah, please do. Uh, she's passed. Anyway. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. That's uh, so, technical difficulty. Uh, so I, what have you learned out of doing this? Well, I've learned a heck of a lot about podcasting, one. I knew nothing about it. I hadn't listened to a podcast until I started doing this, really. And so I, now I commute from the Twin Cities. I'm always listening to podcasts. But what I've mainly learned is what I already knew, but not to this extent. We have an absolutely amazing alumni base. I mean, our alums, I'll include you, uh, they're, they're everywhere. They are all over the world. They're doing all kinds of interesting things. Uh, the latest episode to drop is with a, a physicist. He was a physics major named Jason Smurden. Mm. He's one of the leading climate scientists in, in the world. He's at Columbia University. Right? I mean, I didn't know that. I didn't know that another Jason Haheim, a physics and music double major, is the kettle drum person, the timpanist person for the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. That is, you don't get any better than that, right? Mm -hmm. So learning those kinds of things, and then just connecting with people in the business world who are alums, all different ages too. So I, that has been just a blast for me. It's just been a, it's been a reaffirmation of what I, what I knew and I would hear, but I didn't, I wasn't able to talk to these people the way I can in the podcast, learn about their journeys, and so two, two follow-up uh, mm -hmm. follow questions. Yeah. One, uh, if folks are interested in listening to the podcast, yeah. this is the part where you do the standard, like, where podcasts are yes. found. Yes, tune in. Please tune in. The podcasts are available on all the usual listening platforms. Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, you name it. It's, it's there. So please listen. Uh, you know, you can always not listen if you don't like it. But... You can skip my episode. Yeah. It's the, I mean, one thing I do like about the podcast, um, I, I've, I've received emails from people who have nothing to do with Gustavus, hmm. right? But they've come across the podcast and have emailed me. In one case, it was a guy who was trying to con father, trying to convince his son to go to Gustavus, not to Harvard. Uh, and he was having to listen to the podcast. <laughs> but I, I really, really did it, enjoyed can it. I just, maybe I shouldn't <laughs> ask without knowing the answer. Did I, it work? I don't know. I'm hoping. I, I'm sure it did. I haven't followed up. I'm sure. Why would you go to Harvard? Yeah, I it's say, overrated. Yeah, it, it's way overrated. Yeah, someplace in Cambridge. Yeah, but yeah. So I mean, it's just been it's just been so much fun, so gratifying. So I've learned that. I've learned apparently, people say I have a. a you're the expert. I have a good uh, voice. I've hated my <clears> voice ever since a junior high. I was about to say no one has ever said that I have uh, uh, well, a, a great well, voice. People, but... The first time JJ said it to me, I thought he was kidding. I thought he was being sarcastic. And then everyone has said this to me over and over. That is, the, that is one thing I've learned. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So the second question, yeah. if folks, folks are going to start listening, mm -hmm. but then if they have a suggestion for somebody you should chat email with. Email me. Email you. Email me. Yeah, I'm open. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with an alum in his, about my age in his 60s, whose father is an alum who's still living, who's going on close to 100. I'm trying to interview the dad. The son is afraid that the dad will just keep on talking, won't shut up. It won't. I mean, I'm open to anyone. So send me suggestions. And I have an ever-growing list. I probably, I have at least 100 people on that list easily, easily. Well, that is stuff. very cool. Well, yeah. the, and it's just called the Gustavus. Learn, learning for life learning, at Gustavus. Learning for life at Gustavus. At. <laughs> yeah. At. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for talking to me today. My pleasure. It has been my pleasure. Greg Caster. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Tune into the podcast. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, I think we're getting close there. Okay. 
Hey, welcome back, Gusties. It's Give to Gustavus Day, if you haven't noticed already. Angela Erickson here, class of 2001, Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement, and I am here with Provost Brenda Kelly. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you, Angela. So happy to be here. Welcome to Give to Gustavus Day, everyone. Uh, you know, I always enjoy visiting with you, and I know that our faculty have been dealing with a lot, just like everybody in this world. Uh, can you give us the kind of short story of how things are going this fall? You know, maybe contrasted with how things have been for the last 18 months. I mean, I know last year we talked about what it's like to teach during COVID and some of the adjustments that needed to be made, but how are our faculty feeling here with a little bit more normalcy, a little bit more of a regular schedule and being able to connect with students? Absolutely, uh, thanks for asking that question. Our faculty and our students are so happy to be back in person yeah. and face to face in the classroom. About 70% of our courses this fall are being offered in a fully in-person format, okay. about 25% in a hybrid format, and then we still have 5% in an online format um, to accommodate both faculty and student needs on that end. Um, and faculty have really adapted toward um, taking what they learned over the past 18 months um, and then implementing that into their classrooms now. So even in the hybrid courses, some faculty have found that that may be the mode of instruction they want to use in the future because it's, it's beneficial to um, think about that online learning piece mm -hmm. and then following up um, with an in-person class session yeah, um, with their students. The it, is. Piece. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I was going to ask you specific mm -hmm. learnings from mm -hmm. this past 18 months because I know, I mean, many industries have experienced upheaval and, you know, teaching and learning is no different. So you mentioned that, that idea of seeing the value of hybrid. Is there anything else that you can point to that our faculty feel like they've really taken away as silver linings or opportunities to even improve more their, their I mean, teaching? I mean, I think the the use and the adeptness at, with our, at which our faculty and students have adapted to new technology platforms. Um, we have faculty now that are using podcasts as mm -hmm. assignments because that's what they had to use last year. And students have really taken to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, versus giving a presentation in front of a class. Um, and so there are little, little things like that that we've now fully implemented in some of our course learnings that those students will be able to take on into their careers. Well, and I'm sure faculty, you know, even though it was hard in the moment, appreciate those those opportunities to keep themselves fresh mm -hmm. as professionals right. too, right? right? And sometimes not until your hand is forced, you know, and you're pushed out of your comfort zone. And I'm sure it ends up being invigorating for them because it's new you know, subject matter looked at a different way right, and, right. and really engaging content that maybe they haven't engaged with before. Absolutely. I mean, and we really have some faculty who um, are experts in uh, student learning outcomes, um, online and hybrid pedagogies and mm -hmm. be best practices in those areas. And we've been um, utilizing their expertise in the literature mm -hmm. um, in uh, providing lots of faculty development opportunities for those faculty who do want to learn a little bit more and, and push their uh, technology skill set yeah. toward the future. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of kind of innovation and adaptation, I know the faculty worked really hard over the past few years to give a, a breath of fresh air to the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that I know, it's sort of as an outsider looking in, I'm really excited about, is this idea of the challenge curriculum, the sort of interdisciplinary nature of that curriculum, the way it's preparing students. And I know that that is just kind of being rolled out right now. Can you talk a little bit about those exciting developments? Sure, absolutely. So the challenge curriculum is our new general education curriculum. Um, again, our general education curriculum is the curricula that, that gives our students that liberal arts experience where they can um, take those classes from multiple perspectives and then bring that into their major or bring those multiple perspectives into their career that enhance their critical thinking skills, their problem solving skills, etc. So what um, excites me about the challenge curriculum, we're now in year two. Mm -hmm. um, so both our first years and our sophomores this year that is their curricular program. And we're starting to pilot 
our challenge capstones. Cool. And so um, as part of that curriculum, we have the bookends. We have the first term seminar, which we've been doing for a long mm -hmm. time. But now through this challenge capstone, we can take some of the learnings from that general education mm -hmm. experience. And um, faculty are invited in those challenge capstones to have it be a project-based yeah. um, yeah. course, a project-based and interdisciplinary course. And so bringing students who may have um, their general education courses, but also some experience from their major coursework mm -hmm into that course, um, into that challenge capstone where they can really work with other students mm -hmm. on a particular project that um, meets or um, at least addresses one of the challenges of our time. Yeah. That's the goal with that course. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love it and I think about the world in which we're living right now mm -hmm. and so many of those challenges are so abundantly clear and so complicated. Right. Right. And the fact that our students are getting real live practice, mm -hmm. you know, with this particular element of the curriculum to try their hand at what it takes to solve a problem with such complexity and mm -hmm. work with other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the types of folks that we need out in this world. Right. Absolutely. So I, you know, as someone who's been a teacher, mm -hmm. right, and someone who's a gusty, I just get really excited about the way that that's going to prepare the students coming out of Gustavus right now for these challenges that, man, once you hit the real world, there are some real complexities out there. And it feels like with this, with this amendment and, uh, and innovation in the curriculum that they'll be even better prepared to, to face those challenges. Yes, I okay. think this is really um, a way for our students to take their liberal arts education toward action yeah. and toward um, applying that to a particular project. So yeah. um, we've offered you know, a snapshot of these over the past year and a half or so. Valerie Walker from our education department is teaching um, a course on climate change yeah. and education around that cool. in January term. Sean Easton from our Greek, Latin, and Classical Studies department is teaching one in the spring, um, along with our biologists who are teaching a Nobel preview course oh my gosh. for the insects topic, cool. Nobel 59. So that's a <laughs> another challenge yeah. capstone yeah. that will be offered this spring. I love it. Mm -hmm. The interconnectedness of everything, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the, even though it's not one of the five core values, mm -hmm. right, as pronounced, but just understanding the interconnectedness of our world. Sounds like you and the rest of the faculty are doing a bang up job of making sure that our students realize how interconnected our world yeah, is. Yeah, so thank you. That's thanks, great. Angela. Well, we could talk all day. We could. I, uh, <laughs> I would love to talk to you about research opportunities and some of the really exciting things that students are doing one on one, mm -hmm. but we've got to move on. <laughs> and so I want to thank you. Yes, I want to thank, thank the faculty because mm -hmm. they really have dug in. They really have attended to the needs of our students over the last couple of years. Uh, they carried us. They were the um, <laughs> Greater Gustavus Award winners last year, which was really exciting for me. Um, and I just am, you know, as a Gusty, I am always just so grateful for the efforts that our faculty put in. Well, thank you, Angela. And yes, our faculty um, are so committed to our students. They're so student-centered and really want to serve our students yeah. and the college well in fulfilling our mission. So yeah, absolutely. thank you. Thank you for being mm -hmm. here. Let's take a quick look here at the, uh, at the uh, dashboard. We've got states illuminated. We've got, so I don't know, Brenda, if you've been tracking this morning, but we've got kind of an international flair that we've added to give Great. the Gustavus Day this year. We've got five countries outside of the United States oh, that have fantastic. all already given us gifts. Sweden, Spain, India, Australia, and Japan. So, wow. Oh, this is so exciting. Gussie's this all is around such the a world. great day. I know, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so fun. So, fun, mm -hmm. so exciting. We've got money coming in. We've got lots of states that have illuminated. Uh, but right now, I'm going to toss it over to Tane, who visited with Brownie, the beloved Brownie, talking a little bit about that Lund Center renovation and expansion. And then, when we come back live, Tim is going to visit with Brownie and talk a little bit more about that project. We'll see you in a bit. Give me Gustavus Day. Hi, I'm Tane Danger. It is Give to Gustavus Day. I am back in uh, my normal clothes that I just normally wear. That's a lie. Uh, we are actually inside of Lund right now. You can see, look at people are working out. Uh, you know, burning calories, building muscle. 
was great. We are gonna take, though, a tour of Lund because some very special things are happening, and I have the man to do it. Do you wanna introduce yourself? Tane, thanks. Tom Brown, Director of Athletics here at Gustavus, and happy to take you on a tour of the first phase of the Lund expansion and renovation. This is super exciting. We did a little walk around last year, but it was just a vision, an idea, and now things are starting to happen here, hence the hard hats. You bet, Tane. I remember last year you and TK were out in the parking lot talking about this. Yeah. There was nothing done at that point. Yeah. We're far along right now with expectations that would be done in April for first phase. Okay, can we, yeah, let's can we go. walk on out? You so bet. again, we're going to leave all these wonderful TRXers behind, and now we are going to go out into well, this is kind of scary at this point, a little bit. Like, uh, it's a, uh, oh wow, look at though. You can see where we are. This the football field. This is field. the second floor wellness area. And yes, it overlooks the football field. A wonderful view for our students, faculty, and staff. To our left over here will be group exercise rooms. We'll have three group exercise rooms for daily activity. Classes in the health and exercise science department will be taught there. And then we start working our way towards more of wellness for the cardio and extra weight lifting on this floor. I, can I just take a moment to Anything. say, I cannot uh, wrap my head around how large this space is, right? Like we just, at Lund, always, you know, big space. We just, but we walked through and it was this one corridor. There's kind of like two main workout areas up where we just walked out of. And now this is like palatial. It's enormous. So we're going to go from about 6,100 square feet of wellness to over 20,000 square feet of wellness when this is done. That is wild. Absolutely amazing setup for yeah. us. So, okay, so we we're, what's over here now? What am I looking at? So this is the athletic office area moving forward. It's our suite for offices and that. We'll have about 20 offices in there for the athletic administrators and coaches. But the, the highlight of this space is to our left. Okay, we should come out over here because this is... Look at these windows that are here. Uh, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Uh, this, so what will be happening here in this part of the space? You bet, in this wellness space here, obviously we talked about the group exercise rooms in the back, but it's a combination of weight room and cardio. With the first two rows here by the glass area is all of our cardio overlooking the football field. You can see the Arboretum, the Westfields from here. Absolutely incredible space for our students, faculty, and staff to work out in. So as opposed to being on the elliptical, staring at a concrete wall, as I did for most of my time at Gustavus, you will now have this view as you uh, do your Tim, party. go up there and act like you're on an elliptical. I'm working out just, right now, and we can I, pull the camera up here and show what it's gonna look like. I don't know, uh, this is like <laughs> something between a cardio and like a Snoopy dance. Uh, I love it. It's absolutely amazing. And yeah, so, talent, you, my friend. April, the, is when you're envisioning that people will actually be able to come and start seeing like this in a in a way where they'll be able to tour it themselves potentially. So we've been on pace with Carl Sanderson, great company to work with them and BWBR have us to finish this about mid-April. So our students at the end of the semester will have about a month here before this semester ends to be able to participate in this space. That's cool. I, since this is Give to Gustavus Day, and we are raising money for Gustavus, can we just talk a little bit about what this all, this investment was and is, and what the college is putting forward for this? You bet, Tane. So it's about a $60 million project, a little over that, depending on the, the cost of, uh, the increase in cost in that to do the project. This first phase was about $27.5 million. It's 72,000 square feet. It's a combination of a basement, first level, we'll go down there in a little bit, this second level, and a third floor that has our student lounge and recruiting room. And then the renovation will run will be in phase two as well as expansion out here to the west with our field house with about 53,000 square feet. That is why. Uh, it's so cool. And I, one of the things I really appreciate about this is that it is a space, obviously, for athletes. And you talked about the, the student athletes and the offices and things like that will be here. But then also is going to make this all wildly more functional for all students to like do physical fitness and whatnot. You bet. The number one priority is for our students overall all our faculty and our staff. Athletics, yes, will benefit from it, but the number of priorities for our students, faculty, and staff on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, this is so cool. So uh, I don't, are, you, are you excited about all this? Absolutely thrilled. Uh, it's been four years in the making to get to this point. It's been started with President Bergman giving us a go-ahead to start finding a company that we wanted to work with for the project, and it's BWR, the architectural firm we 
went with. And then we vetted out the different construction companies that had to go with Krauss Anderson. Krauss Anderson so is involved, the best. No doubt about it. And then we broke ground about it, uh, last April and started the project now. And it's about a one-year project for the first phase. Again, 72,000 square feet of wellness. I love it. All right. Well, if you needed any better reason to give to Gustavus, like this amazing thing. Look at this view behind me. Imagine being a student on an elliptical right here overlooking this beautiful thing. Four seasons of the year watching that pass by. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is part of what your gift is supporting. So thank you everyone who has already supported and donated. And if you haven't, Please, now is an amazing, wonderful time to give to Gustavus because uh, this, is, this is going to be here for generations to come. So thank you so much for the tour, sir. You're welcome. All right, I, I'll be back in April. <laughs> we'll good. do an elliptical together. No doubt, looking forward to attain. Really appreciate it. All you Gusties out there and all the families and friends of the programs, thank you so much for your contribution and helping us get to this finished project here in a, a couple of years when it's all said and done. But thanks for supporting Give to Gustavus Day. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. We're excited. You know, I gave Brownie like a minute and a half to get from Lund Center over to here and we're waiting just a minute so I'm hoping that Brownie's gonna make it in here pretty quick you know he's maybe not quite as good a shape as he was when he was playing in the NFL Brownie man nice oh. timing maybe just a couple of seconds I was hoping you I'm need getting, a treat? You need something to eat? I'm going to grab one for the roll when okay. I leave here, TK. But All right. I'm a little out of shape. I'm not quite in that same shape back in the day. I don't think you're dinner. ever out of shape, Brownie. <laughs> but maybe not the days when you were playing for the Bengals. And, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, exciting to have you here, first of all. Tim Kennedy, we're really thrilled to have Tom Brown, our athletic director, with, you, with us here today. And we're going to talk all things athletics, and we're also going to talk about this little project you got going on called the renovation and expansion of Lund Center. Have you spent a little time on that Just project lately? Just a little lately? time over there, TK. Right. It's been fun. Well, you know, Brownie, it has been a pretty amazing last 22 months uh, for the athletic program, for everyone you know, affiliated with the college. Can you talk to us a little bit about what it's been like for you and how exciting it has been for you to get everybody back and competing and allowing fans back to watch games this fall? Yeah, it's been a challenge. Obviously, across the entire campus for everything from academics and just our day-to-day -day work in classrooms and that. But in athletics, it's even a little bit more complicated trying to have athletics go during a pandemic. So it has been challenging, but our student athletes and coaches have done a great job working together to try to get us back on the playing fields. And this fall, 22 and a half months since our last home football game, wow. we kicked off on September 11th for our first home event this year. About 2,000 fans, and it was so much fun being back to a little more normalcy. And we've had great weather this fall. You know, I mean, I think that's really been a nice thing, too. So you haven't had to deal with the complication of rescheduling and, and some of the challenges there. Um, and that first football game was exciting. I mean, yeah. I always get goosebumps at Gustavus Athletic Events. You know, it's pretty close to my heart. But... But it was really special to see everybody back out there. And, and, and we're really having some outstanding performances. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on, Brian? Yeah, so that first game on September 11th, it was fun having alumni and friends and family back on campus. It was a great day. We beat Warburg 27 to 18. And it's been a very successful fall so far. Football team's 5-2, and two, wow. playing well. Two tough losses against what are two top-ranked uh, teams in the country in St. John's and Bethel. But the way it looks right now, I think I'm pretty confident that we can end the year strong and possibly end up at 8-2. and two. But our first championships for our men's and women's golf teams competing at the, the championships, and they both play second. Great tournaments, did a real nice job there. Our two soccer teams are on pace to play in the MIAC playoffs. Men's soccer is currently in second place and women's soccer is in fourth. Women's volleyball is tied for first, getting ready this weekend. If they can pull off two wins, they'll, Rochelle Sheridan will win another conference championship. And when all those three sports, the soccer and volleyball, they have their championship playoff run next, starting next week. Cross-country championships are this weekend. Men's and women's cross-country will be over at Northfield. I really think this is a chance for us to be very successful, especially on the men's side. That's so exciting, Brownie. I mean, it's been so fun um, for me to follow it uh, and to make and to just see the student athletes how excited they are mm -hmm. about being back out there and competing and in front of people. Uh, I mean, and there's there's a performing part of this, right? Think about the motivation that yeah. they get from having their parents and friends in the stands. It's really been amazing. And then. 
winter sports are kicking off, believe it or not. So talk a little bit about what, as we look ahead, what do you expect? Yeah, so hockey was the first to kick off on, uh, excuse me, swimming and diving started okay. first. But our two swim teams are going strong. Hockey's going. The basketball teams are up and rolling. And then gymnastics. I think our first competition is hockey in uh, two weeks. So or actually a week and a half. Yeah. So it's getting close, TK. The ice is up. You're ready to go. Feels yep. good. I walked in the other day, a little <laughs> nip in the air, kind of gets you ready yeah. for what's going to happen here in Minnesota um, the rest of the winter. So obviously you've got the, the competition side down. I mean, everything's going. And then you got this other little small project going on on the side called the renovation and expansion of Lund Center. I know it has consumed your life for the last two years. Um, you've done an amazing job, and I just want to say thank you for all that you're doing to make this project happen. Obviously, a lot of people are involved, but oh, you're, no. you're really leading this, and I just want to say thank you for that. You're knocking it out of the park. So tell everybody what's going on and what you're excited about what you're doing right now with this project. Appreciate that, TK. I think Becky did a nice job in the uh, two segments ago talking a little bit about uh, the Lund expansion renovation. We will be finishing up first phase here in April with our students will have an opportunity to move into a 72,000 square foot wellness area. We're going to go from 6,000 square feet of wellness, which is your cardio, your weight room, and group exercise rooms to over 20,000 square feet. That was the number one priority of this project right from the start. The number two priority was space, and that's in phase two where we'll have the 53,000 square foot uh, indoor practice facility. And then also the key part right now is the transition to the renovation part, which hopefully we get that rolling in April and that'll be a total redo of the current Lund Center. And we'll focus on academics there, creating a new academic wing, improvements to the health and exercise science department. We're going to start our first master's program on campus with our athletic training master program kicking off in 2024. Those are the two key parts that I look for the renovation and then the forum, just redoing a space that's a little bit tired. It's a little worn out. And, and then we're going to have a new entry to yeah. the building. You want to talk about the southeast entry and kind of what that's going to feel like and the people that come to, and we're also going to move the Nobel Conference yeah. will be in the forum from now on. Commencement when we go in side will be the high school tournaments of pe people that attend they'll be welcomed into this beautiful new space you want to talk a little bit yeah, about that? that spectacular entrance is going to be amazing when you come in ground level it'll actually have steps right down in the forum for the nobel conference it's three levels through there when you have the elevator that can take you up to each different level to the competition level and then up to the spectacular student lounge on the third level one thing that we've never had in our building which will be a great addition to the whole project here in the whole lund center so we're in the final minute of our time together. Yep. It always just disappears. <laughs> it does. Um, just what, in the end, um, what's going to excite you most about this new building and, and what's ahead of us and what you think it means for the college and for the athletic program? You know what excites me the most, TK, is just going to be seeing our students, faculty, and staff excited about Lund again. It's been a little frustrating just not having the facility like others have and to have us move to one of the top facilities in the entire country. That will be my pride and joy through this. Well, re really proud of all that you've done for this, Brownie. I am so excited. I cannot wait to get into this building, and everyone else is going to love it as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I think we're heading out to Steve Chelgren. We're excited for him to talk about the food service. But, again, thanks for joining us for Give to Gustavus Day. Thanks, TK. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. This is Give to Gustavus Day, and I have never been so excited for a segment for multiple reasons, starting with the fact that we're joined by Steve, the head of dining services here, and fun fact, my sixth cousin. Uh, very cool. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi, Dave. It's great to have you back on campus. I love being here. And this, uh, we are actually in dining services right now because you all are, are sort of we're celebrating generations of food here at Gustavus. And you have put together, I think, the most incredible spread I have ever seen at Gustavus of Gustavus Dining Services through the years. Look at all of this. This is super cool. And we should just say, starting at the very beginning, uh, we have a couple things here of Evelyn Young. For folks who are maybe younger and don't know, who was Evelyn Young? Evelyn Young, a long time and famous uh, food service director at Gustavus Adolphus College for many, many, many years, decades, and a sweetheart, a wonderful person, and a baker extraordinaire. And so what we wanted to do is highlight some of her bakery uh, favorites, and starting with her family cookbook, all this in rye bread too. Um, it's out of print now, so we won't be able to get it, but 
If you give me a call or contact somebody at Gustavus, we can find a recipe for you. That is super cool. And we should just say, you didn't put these glasses on just for the fashion sake. These are very much Evelyn Young style <laughs> glasses. Okay, so Evelyn Young probably started here in the 50s, she, right? 50s, maybe even as early as late 40s. I uh, don't know for sure. She was a student uh, graduate in the 30s. And so, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my recollection. Um, and she and her husband, Gus, uh, long time um, Gus Davis personalities. Gus was the basketball uh, coach for many, many years. Uh, just such a long family tradition with the Sponbergs. And Sponberg Peterson is a niece of uh, Evelyn Young. And so, so much connection. And that is and an here we outstanding. Are. It's 1955, everybody. <laughs> hey, I'm at Gustavus and I want to eat some sweets. What do you got for me? Evelyn Young. Well, before you get your sweets, you're going to have to have your rye bread. Ah, oh, man. I know, so we got to have the bread first, and then we move on to some almond cream pie. Oh, wow. Look at this. Is it? Uh, look at this. Almond, they're, they're it, made it's two of them. It's beautiful. And one of Ev Evelyn's favorites. And, of course, you were going to do that, Tane. Mm. Um, I thought you might. Mm. So we didn't even put out forks for a reason. That's fine. And so, moving on to... Moving on to the 1960s. Oh. It's fine. Yeah. Um, down with war and um, other social ills. Man. All right. Up, yeah, and up with carrot cake. Up with carrot cake. Right. Mm. And Saint this. and Saint Lucia rolls. Oh, so these right from Sweden. Of course, um, we need to uh, pay uh, pay respect to our Swedish heritage. And here, Tane, oh. we've actually got a fork. Oh for you. well, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, mm. Evelyn would be so proud. It does. It tastes like uh, an Italian maiden <laughs> who somehow found her way to Sweden. This right. is great. These look it, and you can they're, also they're beautiful. You can have them as like earpieces then later. Okay, so we made it through the 1960s. Evelyn, we should say she was here cooking a long time. So we're moving into 1970s. Come on down this way. 1970s and 80s. Evelyn left uh, the dining service about 1981. Um, then moved over to the advancement office. So she stuck around for a long time, uh, drove every day from Edina, knew every highway patrolman on the way between here and there, of course. Wait, why? Uh, uh, because they called her White Lightning for a reason. Oh, Not only wow. because she had bright white hair, she drove a bright white Cadillac, and every highway patrolman knew her between here and there. That's cool. So it's 1970. Uh, all of my clothes are tacky, but uh, the lights are bright, and I can disco and eat. What am I eating oh, here? Oh, chocolate gateau. Oh, wow, look at this. Th that is, uh, th there's no flour in that. You don't have to worry about any gluten allergies with that one in 1970s and 80s, okay? It's all <laughs> chocolate, it's all good. Um, and moving on to. She was here all the way into the 80s, we were talking another about. Another Swedish favorite. Yeah, oh, sorry, Brad. The, I don't want to get hair in you. The, the Kringle. Again. Oh, the Kringle. This is a yes, Kringle. Another almond. This is good. This is the me generation. And so I'm taking this for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, greed is good. It's 1984, everybody. Apple computers are brand new and cool, uh, which they still are. Mm. Oh, wow. It does kind of crinkle. Like it, yeah, it's very almondy. It's very, thank, okay, that's fine. That's good. All right. Oh, wow. This is more sugar than I usually have for breakfast. Um, okay, that's good. And then we're moving along to the 90s, baby. I'm going to put on my, uh, I don't actually, I never really watched Friends. This is not either a Rachel. It's like if Rachel and Monica had like a baby, uh, this would be the haircut. No, that doesn't work at all. Anyway. It's more Austin Powers if you ask me. Thank you. It's 1990 something now. And what are we having? Well, so as far as we know, the Frost Your Own Cookies had some origin in the 90s. We don't know really? exactly when they turned up. We've done some research. We can't figure it out. It doesn't matter. They're super good. They're still popular today. Uh, everybody knows Frost Your Owns. Along with our pumpkin dessert, of course, for the season, we've got pumpkins and gourds and a full apart cinnamon rolls that our students love today. And it would not be complete without our very own Gustavus waffle bar and they are amazing they i remember the waffle bar when i first came to gustavus being this amazing thing you get to college and you're like wait i can make my own waffle whenever i want and now it even has the gustavus logo on it 
this is a pretty magical place. What could be better? What could be better? Steve, I cannot thank you enough for putting all of this together for us and taking us through literally uh, 50, 60 years worth of dining services history, honoring Evelyn Young. Thank you so much. This is absolutely wonderful. Um, if this brings back any warm, wonderful memory from you, or you just want to, you know, uh, give me some credit for putting on all these different wigs now, please, today's the day. Give to Gustavus. That's what it's all about. So thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody. All right. Funny way to cut that. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back. Tom Young here with Tain Danger. Hello. That I brought you a pumpkin. Well, thank you. It's from Big Hill Farm. Uh, I saw that video of you. How'd that go with the uh, ghost pepper or the pepper? It is. I'm drying out now. It's that I'm getting there. <laughs> the... Uh, some things are staged, some are planned. The reaction was authentic. Oh yeah, no, that was a real, uh, that was a real pepper. And this is a real pumpkin. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. We'll, I think we'll have that there because yeah. we have kind of a food theme going. Uh, that looked like a lot of fun with Steve Shelgren. Uh, and what could be more fun than looking at all of the food? I, uh, I was blown away. They put together this entire spread and it is like impressive. You know, I, you were here slightly before me. Uh, a couple of years. A couple of years. And one of the things that I always feel very grateful or humble about is that, you know, I was here when Gustavus came into having one of the best dining services, like, in the country, probably, and it's a point of pride, and this amazing spread that they put out was proof of that. These are, like, world-class desserts. And we get to eat them, not every day, but through the course of a month, you might see all of those things. That's why we've built that into today's theme, and we have a dramatic entrance for the food that we're featuring right now. Now, I love this. which are sticky buns and Kringle. Oh, look at! Oh, what a fabulous! Thank you oh, so much, thank you, Gus. Gus. Oh, I like Gus, everybody. Oh, the, if anybody's ever going to deliver you a Kringle, you'd uh, want should, it to be Gus. You want it to be Gus. Look at how sticky these buns are. They're literally sticking together. What could go wrong with uh, a croissant baked in a caramel sauce? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just don't eat it on live yeah. TV. Okay. Uh, th I'm, well, I might eat a little bit of this. Uh, so this is very exciting. It's the beginning of Good to Gustavus Day. Uh, I, you know, I, we're mailing these, I assume, to everybody who gives $50 or more, they get a plate of Kringle. Actually, everybody that makes a gift can come down and sample that today if they do. But on the other hand, everybody on campus who makes a gift today is being hand-delivered one of the famous Gustavus Frost Your Owns. That is very cool. And so it's our way of saying thank you to the campus community. The campus community pitches in on Give to Gustavus Day and supports uh, one of our heritage scholarships. Uh, and so uh, it's faculty, staff, all employees, everybody on campus supporting uh, our students, which is quintessential Gustavus yeah. from beginning to end, right? Yeah, so, that's yeah. very cool. And it is cool that, you know, the campus community comes together to make this thing happen. It's a special thing. You know, there's there's a lot of colleges out there, and you have to imagine there are, there are colleges and universities that are a little more, like, transactional, a little more like, yeah, I go there, whatever. But this is like a community. People on the care. one end, you've got transactional. On the other end, you have Gustavus, relational. Yeah. It's all it's about beautiful. relationships. And, the, and, you know, what better to start a relationship with? Than Kringle. Than Kringle. It says... Welcome. Yeah. I, somebody hopefully donate $50 and I will take a giant bite out of this right now. I'm going to oh, watch someone, the Oh, someone just did. Uh, oh. mm. I guess right now I need to take over uh, the broadcast no. for a minute no. or two. These You're going to see some other Gustavus favorites through the day. You might uh, see the uh, holiday uh, Christmas uh, Swedish nuts. You might see red velvet cake. Uh, maybe you'll see... Uh, something we call Robert Redford cake. I don't know why it's called that. I, don't I know talked either. to Steve Shelgren yesterday and he said, I think that's just the name of it, Tom. Did he make it originally? I don't believe so. Wow. I don't know that he was a gusty. I don't know either, but Robert Redford, if you are watching, we have a cake for you. Please come on down. If you make a $50 gift, we'll gladly sit on camera and enjoy it. And enjoy a Robert Redford cake. There are a lot of um, different challenges and things up on the board right now. I know that we're doing this 50 state challenge. How are we doing it? 29 states. So we're up over like half of the states, if my math is correct. I only, I didn't take very many math. You classes. are correct. Uh, 29 is more than 25. Got it. Uh, and we are ahead of where we were last year, which is a lot of fun. We've seen some states that sometimes are a little bit tricky. Rhode Island is in. We have nine gusties in Rhode Island. Really? Just think if we could do one out of nine 
gusties in every state. That would be fantastic. That would, I, we would go up and over goal almost immediately. I do. I feel like we need to close off these coasts because, you know, you've got we, – we're still missing Maine. Uh, and Oregon. And Oregon. Maine is just – and so beautiful. I don't know. People up there probably are just enjoying leaves so much that they can't get to their computers to make a gift. But I'm going to ask you, step away from the lobster roll for just a minute and make your gift to Gustavus. Sir, step away from the lobster roll. I, what, do uh, we, yeah, we have lo uh, lobster rolls later coming, right? I think. I don't know that you're here for that segment, but we might. Uh, we are doing really well. It looks like we could use some friends in Montana and uh, Idaho, Oregon, Nevada. Uh, we know you're there. We'll know you'll come through. But the sooner the better, because when we hit all 50 states, we release $50,000. Uh, Where is $50,000 coming from? I hope it's not me. Uh, we'll talk about that later. What? But this year, uh, as we did last year and the year before, President Bergman and Dr. Tom Bergman are the folks that are underwriting the $50,000 50 state challenge, wow. which is absolutely fantastic. That is so very we give cool. thanks for, for their support. And I see maybe uh, we might go up in over $20,000 in our overall total, even during this segment. That would be very stay cool. Tuned. Yeah. So that's very, very generous. President Bergman, again, Always. A community member, not just somebody who sort of like this is a job for her. She is like part of this place and is literally putting $50,000 on the table to prove that and to show that. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Should we take a look at the tile challenges and see where we are? We should look at the tile challenges. I will be honest. I Since I first looked at this this morning, I have been very curious whether uh, we believe in our Gustavus students challenge will finish first or... We Love Thursday Omelet Bar will finish first. It's up to you all at home which one you are going to make close out first, the Omelet Bar or the Gustavus students. I know where I would put my money. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. I'd put it on the students. Yeah, that's fine. And as you can see, we've changed the omelet one now to the caramel sticky buns and Kringle. If that was one of your favorites, click that tile when you go in. That'll be up for another, I think, half hour or so. But you can see that we're making our way on our We Believe in Our Gustavus students and our faculty and staff are almost tied, 43-44. And uh, then we, we're really looking for new and long-lost donors. If you haven't made a gift recently, this is your chance to come back in. Oh, I love. Oh, so it's long lost in that they haven't made a gift. It's not long lost like you know they walked off campus one day and they just got lost and like we're trying. We've been we're trying still to looking find for them. them. No. We sent a Saint Bernard out to them <laughs> with Kringle under its neck. And that we, finally, we found you. Oh, thank goodness. It's been 12 years since you were on campus. Please come back, but make a gift. Uh, it would be great. Uh, and look, at we have all these countries, too, speaking of long lost. The food segments and the countries are the new two ideas we have for this year that we're bringing to the it. community. And so we are looking for gusties around the world. And I know that uh, we had a couple of those when I was here last. And since then, we have added France and the United Kingdom and uh, friends in Sweden. Uh, and so what are we up to? Two, four, six, seven out of our 10. And our goal is 10 folks from around the world. If you know somebody that isn't in one of these countries that you haven't talked to in a while, this is the time to shoot them an email, send them the link, get them involved in Give the Gustavus Day 21. I don't know if it's too late for this for today, but there is this very popular thing. You probably watch this every year. Eurovision, big song contest. Yes. We should have Gustavus Eurovision. I feel like, uh, like the board would light up all over Europe for like, oh my gosh, uh, Croatia needs to get on the big board. <laughs> Because we are absolutely not going to let Finland walk away the trophy with the this trophy year. this year. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful idea. We're going to take that back to committee and think about that for next year. I've heard that before. Anyway, uh, this is great. I, I'm so glad to be here. We're gonna. I'm actually, whether you like it or not, here and part of this day all day. I did all kinds of things uh, to get ready for today and talk to a bunch of people. I think you about ten or twelve videos, maybe. I'm I trying mean, to think how many it was. What was lot. your favorite? Uh, well, I actually, I really did like visiting Big Hill Farm, even with the pepper biting. But it's very cool. Like these, all these students have grown all these things up there. We saw already the big tour of the new Lund expansion, which is mind blowing. You all, like, I can't overstate how dramatically different. Lund is going to be, uh, we made maybe one comment about this, but if you're like me, probably a, a lot of folks over the last like 30 years are used to doing cardio 
facing like a concrete wall back and forth. And now it's going to be this big expansive space where you're staring out at the entire stadium and you have these floor to ceiling windows and you can see everything. Totally different experience. Love that. Uh, so uh, we did those. Uh, we talked to a lot of uh, students and faculty. Uh, we do a, a shoe a shoe fashion show kind of at one point. It's going to be, there's a lot of fun stuff. We talk about ghost stories too. That sounds fantastic. And the Greg Caster, that was a fun interview uh, to see as well. Yeah. Speaking of new things going on, do you want to say 30 seconds about your new job at Westminster? Sure. So I, just this past year, took over as the director of the Westminster Town Hall Forum in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota's largest, longest running speaker series. We bring in eight to 10 uh, national speakers to give hour long talks in Minnesota on issues from an ethical perspective. And I will tie this back. This is absolutely true. I really believe in the work of the Westminster Town Hall Forum, lifting up voices of conscience to address the issues of the day from an ethical perspective in this lecture format. It's stuff that really comes out of this Gustavus education. And yes, there's a lot of places where you can go and hear some of these kind of folks give a talk, but we at the forum, at the Westminster Forum, really try and drive home. It's about having that ethical space, that ethical underpinning of how should we think about issues? How should we approach these controversial or, or difficult debates that we are having? And that ethical underpinning framework is absolutely something that comes out of a Gustavus education. I was super excited to see the partnership with the Nobel Conference at Gustavus along yeah. with Westminster Town Hall Forum. Really exciting opportunities for everybody. Absolutely, yeah. We were able to bring in a speaker together who fo first spoke at the Westminster Town Hall Forum, Dr. Wendy Chun from the De Digital Democracies Institute at Simon Fraser University in Canada. And then the next day she gave a talk at the Nobel Conference. It's a beautiful partnership because she's somebody who is thinking right now and working on how is big data, how is the internet shaping our lives, which was a big part of what the Nobel Conference was about. And then for the forum, we asked her to do a talk on how is it shaping democracy, big data and the internet. And so it was a beautiful partnership and, and very exciting to get sort of two by at the Apple with a world-class thinker and speaker. Thanks for all the work you're doing, Tane. Thanks I for being on campus. Keep putting these Kringles out. I'll be here all week. As I wrap this up, you can enjoy Kringle, and then I'm going to have some Kringle with you. Folks, we're almost up to $20,000. Uh, that'll be the next threshold. Keep clicking on those tiles, looking for some friends from all around the world. Uh, and I think we're going to take and go uh, enjoy your tour of the Geology Museum Oh, next. yeah. That's very cool. There's a mastodon tusk in there. Did you know that? I had heard that. Yeah, that's it's again something from your. Never mind. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you are out there watching either in Montana or Croatia, now is the time to make a gift. We need to put you up on the board. Thanks, everybody. Go Gusties. Hi, I'm Tane Danger. I am here in a relatively brand new space, probably brand new for a lot of folks who are watching uh, here at Gustavus. I've got two wonderful guests who are going to help show me around. Do you mind uh, introducing yourselves? Hi, I'm Taylor. I am a senior geology major and a student worker here in the museum. And I'm Julie Bartley. I am a faculty member, a professor of geology and environmental studies, and I'm the curator for the museum. So this is the museum. This is the museum. I, and you, this is super exciting. This what I don't believe this was open uh, last time I was on campus. Almost certainly not. Right. Yeah. No, it wouldn't have been. So this is in the new north expansion to Nobel Hall. The previous geology museum was back on the south end of the old Nobel Hall. So we've moved it and expanded it and rearranged it in this new space. And it is gorgeous. And you have been instrumental in setting a lot of these different things up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, my job is to design the exhibits, care for the specimens, and generally organize our collection here. So I, I'm hoping you'll show us around, show us a few things. First of all, can you explain this tub of cupcake sprinkles uh, that you have <laughs> uh, and why? So this is what we call a stream table. Water comes out this end, runs down through this artificial sand. So this artificial sand is recycled melamine. You think about plastic oh, yeah. kid plates. 
It behaves just like sand, but it's much lighter, so it doesn't break our aluminum table. And what we can do with this is we can show how a stream would carve through um, a soft substrate and create a river with bends in it and cut banks and have landslides. So we can really model at a small scale what happens in a, in a river system. That's super fun. That's great. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's very cool for seeing how these things work in nature. You though, I don't know, I don't want to bury the lead. We have some things over here that are enormous and somewhat terrifying. And I'm wondering if you can show us over here. What did you call this? What did we call this wall? Let's, we can walk over the there. The Giants of the Past exhibit. Giants of the Past exhibit. So this, I, I have no idea even, is this an old like anchor for a boat? <laughs> It's more of an anchor for a whale. Um, it is a baleen whale vertebra from about 23 to 3.5 million years ago. That's when the species was alive. And they are a relative of the modern blue whale. The blue whale. Mm -hmm. The largest creature on Earth, Indeed. right? Indeed. They to weren't now. nearly as big, but it's it, they're related. Yeah. That's cool. And again, uh, this is a woolly mammoth tusk? Yes. Did they find that here, like when they were building the new Nobel? No, unfortunately <laughs> not. Although you actually can find mammoth parts in the sediment of, of this area. Oh. This one particularly was found in Alaska. Okay, that's large. It is very large. It's mm. giant of the past. It is. Uh, and then last, uh, but certainly not least, bison skull. Again, uh, kind of, t I mean, you, that's sort of scary. It's not even moving towards me and it's a little bit scary, like. Well, it's facing backwards right now. So oh, we have good. it uh, a little more visible to the people who are walking by outside. Um, so it's moving away from you, don't that's worry. That's good. <laughs> I mean, can you tell me a little bit about like how you fell in love with uh, geology? Cause I, I will just totally admit, Geology, my worst classic Gustavus. Like I did, I, it's not your fault. I just, I, I could never get the cleavage and the like sediment. I just could never wrap my head around it. That's all. not my area of expertise either. Um, I'm more interested in the paleontology side of things. Um, I was the little six-year-old who loved dinosaurs, and then became the 22-year-old who loves dinosaurs. So um, it was more just. I got here and I realized that I could actually like pursue this passion I'd had for a long time. And I met Julie and Julie's a paleontologist and I realized that I could be a paleontologist too. And so I've had a lot of fun working with Julie and learning things from her and getting to work in this amazing space. It's honestly a little bit of a dream come true. And I hope to do this work when I graduate as well. Spanish yeah. and communications. Cool. So. All right, here we go. Hey, welcome back to the live live stream, Gusties. It's Angela Erickson here, Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement. And it's Give to Gustavus Day, folks. We are up over $19,000 raised already. Woo, go Gusties. We've got almost 150 folks who have given gifts this morning. Uh, we are seeing some of those challenges chug along really nicely. People believing in our students, believing in our uh, faculty and staff, dig in the gusty treats that we've got out here on the table and any other ones that you love during your time here on the hill uh we're gonna have a really really quick conversation uh with uh, someone from the education department this is amy hi amy hello good morning yeah so excited to have you here thanks for having me um you know teachers are near and dear to my heart you're a teacher i was a teacher not right now but i feel like i was put on this earth to be a teacher so even in cases like this i try to teach whenever i get a chance uh but tell me ta let's talk a little bit about what it means to be a teacher right now right i've always said it's a not a career for the faint of heart but man these last 18 months uh it has really been something uh Anything in particular that you can talk about, what you're hearing from alumni out in the world who are current teachers, right, folks, you know, uh, graduates of the department, what are they saying about what it's like to be a, gusty, a teacher right now? Right, I think the, the pandemic presented a lot of challenges in the moment yeah. for teachers for that shifting to online learning mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So they had almost three semesters maybe when they were, were doing online, solely online, or maybe they had some students online and some students in person. So that was a, really a lot to balance. Mm -hmm. And I think now they're just so thankful to be back in classrooms yeah. with students. And I think part of the challenge now is that they are working with students who haven't been in classrooms right. for 
potentially one and a half years. So think of a, a kindergartner, yeah. or I mean, think of somebody who was in kindergarten when the pandemic started, yeah. and now they're coming in as second graders, yeah. but they have really not had the experience in schools and built up their school stamina, totally, so to speak. So I hear from Gusty teachers that there are students coming back who who don't necessarily know how to do school mm -hmm. as, as much as they would expect, or for instance, music educators who find that their band students are, are way behind in yeah. terms of note theory and reading yeah. music and that sort of thing, because they, when they shifted to online, yeah. they changed to more of a music theory type right. model right. versus a performance model because yeah. they couldn't play together. Totally. So really thankful to be back in person and just working through some of those uh, challenges of of students developing their stamina and and the really some mental health problems that the pandemic brought to light for a lot yeah. of students and that's I think a whole a whole yeah. nother interesting topic in yeah. itself. Well, and I know you and I talked a little bit about the teacher shortage before we came on live and so you know bridging that gap between what you're hearing out in the universe about gusty teachers and what's going on in education and bridging that to our students who you are encouraging to move into that profession. What is that job like for you as a faculty member in the education department? What are you doing to make sure that our gusties feel prepared, are excited to go out there in the world and make a difference? Because we need teachers and we need good teachers. Absolutely. What's happening in your department Absolutely. right now? Absolutely. I think we've always, we've had a strong history of preparing mm -hmm. our students well for the classroom. And now I think it's being realistic about what they will experience because sometimes even in the best of times, it's a transition for them yeah. going from being in their college classrooms and maybe spending 10 hours a week in a K-12 mm -hmm. classroom to being there every day. So we're still working hard to prepare them for, for the curriculum side mm -hmm. of things and the teaching and learning side of things, but also for what's the reality that's out there. So actually last week, we had all of our student teachers on campus for a student teaching seminar, oh, cool. which happens every semester and we, we provided some time for them to interact with our students who are in methods, so anticipating student teaching, yeah. so they could have some interaction and, and tell keep the, it real. Tell the method students, okay, here's what here's what I'm experiencing, and here's here are the rewards and the challenges, and here's the best advice that I have for you yeah. moving forward. And my husband is also an educator; he's a high school principal, and okay. he came in and worked with the student teachers and did some mock interviewing, and. I think he said it really well when he just said, teaching is really hard right now and there are a lot of challenges, but we real, kids need you. Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing. And, yeah. and for those people I think who are teaching as a vocation for them, and that's, that's most of our majors feel that way, I think that it's still a job worth doing and mm -hmm. a job that matters. Yeah. Yeah, and that through line is really valuable, I think, for those students who are here on campus, you know, seeing those gusties who have gone out in the world and are making a difference and are on the front lines and giving them an opportunity, right, a, a, a glimpse into what it's like and to hear that directly from kind of a peer, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a fellow, you know, former student member in the department, I think that's really impactful. So kudos to y'all for facilitating those conversations because I know, and I know, you know, you, you said the very first thing you said is that we've got a good reputation of churning out really high quality educators. Absolutely. I know that in my own district. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working, I, now I'm on the school board in Eastern Carver County, but uh, before that I was working with the foundation and two of our teacher of the year winners over the last several years have been gusties. And I know awesome. every gusty that is in that district really just has a sterling reputation. And yep. that's thanks to y'all and the good work that well, you're doing. Well, thank you. And yeah. really it's, I have to give credit to my colleagues in, yeah. in our department for that. And just the ability to really get to know our students. Yeah. I actually am a parent too of a yeah. gusty now. And cool. our daughter was looking at colleges last year, thinking about elementary education. And we let her go through the, the whole process as if she didn't have a parent working at Gustavus. Mm -hmm. And my husband, because he's in education as well, said to me only, not to our daughter, but he said, how do we not have her go to Gustavus? Because he knows the reputation that, that Gustavus has among yeah. among school districts as well. So yeah. she did choose Gustavus in the end. Yay! So we're excited about that. 
Yeah, go Gusties. Okay, we've got to toss it out in a minute, but I want you to give me 60 to 90 seconds worth of what it's like to be in Anderson Hall. I know it's so a recent amazing. renovation, cool, great new facilities, yes. top, top of the line, world class for your students. What has that meant for you all as a department? It's made such a difference, and I will every day I will thank Deb Pitten for her mm -hmm. just hard driving toward that goal yeah. of getting Anderson renovated for us because it's been amazing for us to be able to have model classrooms. Yeah. So we have an elementary model classroom, and we have an art and science classroom that has lab tables so that our professors can really model what they want their students to do when mm. they get out in, into classrooms as well. And I think it also has such great spaces for breakout rooms, mm -hmm. you know, so we can break out into small groups and we can do some physical and online or hands-on type learning yeah. when they can get out into the open areas and, and really use the space too. And I see that with our majors who, for instance, a science major who was practicing having students serve as planets and distance to the sun oh, sure. and really they could create a physical model which yeah. is which is really amazing and what we want them to do. Yeah. Yeah, teaching is about theory, but it's about practice. And Absolutely. it takes that physical practice, that spatial awareness. I mean, there's so many things that go into being a quality teacher. And so that's cool that you all feel good about the space that you have to you know, give those students that living, breathing, learning laboratory mm -hmm. and expose them to some real life experiences that they're gonna th see once they're beyond the Definitely. hill. Definitely. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks to you and your colleagues for doing such a fine job with our students. And thank you to all teachers who might be tuning in. I mean, if there has been an industry that has been impacted more uh, through this pandemic and everything that's going on, I would love to hear about it because I really, I. I give so much credit to teachers. They have done so much over the last 18 months, you know, digging in, you know, as we would say at Gustavus, making their lives count, right? Like you say, our, our student teachers, our folks out there that are teaching, they do it because it's the thing to do. It's the right thing to do. It helps our society uh, and it makes a difference every day. So thank you to teachers. Thank you to you, Amy, and your colleagues. Thank you. uh, let's give to Gustavus today, folks. Let's uh, celebrate all of the great things that are happening here on campus. Uh, let's celebrate all of the ways that we can support what's happening here, what's happening around the world. Uh, we've got a great day filled uh, up with more content for you. We'll be coming back in a few minutes. Okay, this is very exciting. Hi! It's Give to Gustavus Day. I am sitting here inside Lund where I'm about to get my foot wrapped, which I feel more guilty about than any other bit that we have ever done, but I picked the better of my two feet. I'm here with Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi. And you are a senior? Yes, I'm a senior athletic training major. That's very cool. Uh, so can you, uh, how, tell me a little bit about being an athletic training major. Like what, how'd you get into this? Yeah, so I got into it specifically um, because I had like a lot of injuries in high school and I would um, just ask like the why. And like instead of just like doing whatever they told me, I'd be like, well, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? So then coming to Gustavus, um, there's that intro meeting freshman year with Mary Westby. And I just like really got into it, really interested into it and knowing and like upperclassmen that were in athletic training and they talk very highly of it. I thought it was a really good fit for me and I love it. That's super cool. Yeah. Uh, what is this spray can that you have? So is this, this mace? Is, <laughs> this is pre-tape. So this is goes on before we start any of the ankle tape just so it like doesn't stick as much and then it's easier to get off after practice. Okay, like a lubricant. Okay, yeah. so yeah. should I shield my eyes? No, like, we're gonna, gonna start spray? with this. I won't get okay. it everywhere. Oh, it's cold. A little cold, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so you uh, you spray it down. So, yep. like, what, I don't know, if you were taping my ankle like this, what would be the injury that I would have been um, having? An ankle sprain. So, like, you can go inversion or eversion. So, like, there's two Which is better? Tentacles. I want the best one, inversion or eversion. They're both great. Okay. There's one that's more say common. I have both. You have both? Okay. Yeah. So, we just, like, there's a certain thing that we would switch if you have, like, an inversion or an eversion ankle sprain, but we're just going to do the more common one today. Do, oh, well, yeah. that's fine, yeah. I guess. <laughs> sure. Okay, so, so you've sprayed me. I sprayed you. These are healing lace pads and they got just like a little bit of lubricant on them so it's like you don't get blisters when you put your cleat on or whatever practice you're yeah, doing. That's good. I uh, I was a, a diver but I did okay. wear cleats which is why I was not a good diver. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that would be kind of tough on the diving board. Yeah, it is. It's All They right. didn't appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, and you've got gold tape. Yes, I picked the gold pre-wrap today. Wow. So this is it's what it is, pre-wrap. It goes on before the tape so it's just like you don't get any blisters because the tape, especially 
being a guy, the tape just right on your skin, it's gonna hurt coming off because like pulling your hair and stuff. So this will help when you're taking the ankle tape off. But we have all these different colors. There's black over there, but I thought gold would be That's good. a good one for today. This is great. So, okay, while you're doing that, I just, one thing I've been wondering since I've been sitting here, there's this, is this skeleton just to help you remember like all the different bones you know of the we body. have a new um athletic trainer that works here and she really likes halloween but yeah i think it's a really good learning tool that is good uh i am very quickly noticing i can no longer really move my ankle that's good uh so and i it's the start of the day but that's fine i i, I don't really need it it's you know, good leave it on all day yeah i yeah. don't see why well, i don't even know how i would take this off uh <laughs> at this point okay so that's pre-tape and now you, now you're just, if this now feels just like- just taping your ankle. You're just taping it. It's just yep. like I, and so this would make me a mobile and then I would just hobble uh, around. Uh, no, you can definitely walk in this. Um, a lot of like, so I'm with football right now for athletic training, so I'm um, working with football. And they, a lot of them get their ankles taped. So some are as preventative measures, some are because they do have like current ankle sprains. Um, but yeah, they're, they practice fully in it and it's just so they prevent like another ankle sprain from occurring. Okay, I get, so you're with football now. Yes. Have you worked with other like athletics before? Yeah, so when you're a sophomore, you just observe um, and you wear this really nice observer shirt. Um, and then you just like observe the preceptors, you go out to practices and everything like that. Um, but then when you're a junior, you're more like with like a specific sport and rotation and you rotate between the preceptors and the different sports and things like that. And then when you're a senior, you're more like of a lead and you have like a season long sport and um, you go to high schools, we can go to TRIA in Bloomington. Um, so like some of my friends right now, they're at Shakopee High School, some of them are at TRIA in Bloomington, some of them are observing a physician. And I gotta just say, so which, which athletic is the best to work with and which ones are like the most likely to be kind of whiny? Oh, okay. So I wouldn't say whiny, but I would say that the hockey players are the stinkiest. Oh, wow. Um, we but went there. But I like all of them equally because I just like being with all the sports. Like I swam in high school, so being with the swimmers, I ran track, but then like being with football, like it's just like getting a different perspective and a different aspect because they're all so different. They need different things. Very so. diplomatic. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, uh, are we all... Is this about there? We're like, almost done. Almost yep. done. Uh, that's good. And so, what will you know? You're you're a senior now. What, I am. What what sort of the future look like? Uh, you know, I mean, I get injured more and more, it feels like, the older I get. So, so it seems like the future is bright for someone who knows how to do this. So my ultimate goal is I'm going to take a gap year here after Gustavus, and then I want to do um, my master's at UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina. Oh, cool. And I want to master in athletic training, specialize in concussion therapy, and really focus on, like, mental health, nutrition, and concussion, and more, like, prevention rather than, like, treating concussions, can we prevent them? Because I had a lot of concussions in high school, so I really passionate about that. That's very cool. We're almost done. I got about two more to go. Oh, uh, two more. Yeah. I really, I mean, I don't, it, I'm not going to be able to move it anyway at this point, but <laughs> like, uh, okay, so that's one and two. Well, uh, thank you so much, Ashley, for completely immobilizing my ankle. Of course. Uh, this is great. I, I feel secure now. Uh, this is good. I'm very delighted to know this and to know to avoid hockey players. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much. Uh, this is Give to Gustavus Day. Thank you, Ashley. This has been fabulous. All right. We will see you all soon. <laughs> bye bye. Good morning. Welcome back to Give to Gustavus Day 2021. Thank you for joining us. We're really excited about this day. My name is Tim Kennedy. I'm the Vice President for Marketing and Communication at Gustavus, and I am very pleased to be joined by Andrew Costin and Heather Banks from our Center for Career Development. Heather specializes in health professions, and we're gonna talk about that here in just a minute. So one of the things I always like to do during this day is change my outfit every time I'm on, and I think that you know I do that to have a little fun. But I got outdone by Heather today. So Heather, do you want to explain? You don't wear this to work every day, uh, although it'd be fun if you did. Um, you want to tell them what's going on today and why yeah. you're dressed up the way you are? So career development today, um, Human Resources sent out a challenge to have offices celebrate um, Halloween or different activities. And so Julie Rudolph, a um, colleague of mine in our office, came up with the idea that we were going to dress up as the 80s. So down in our office, they have a lot of posters up about what was going on in the 80s and workforce and 
I did grow up in the 80s, so I, I thought <laughs> about denim, and that's, you know, what I'm, I'm here today. So, well, yes. Uh, I was just going to say, of course, I graduated from Gustavus in 1982, so I feel right at home. <laughs> this is what I was wearing during the time. So thanks for getting involved. And yes. it's, it, it's one of the things about Gustavus is that people really get into what we're doing here, and it r brings us together as a community. So thanks for taking part. Really appreciate it. We're excited. We've got some time here now to talk about the Center for Career Development, uh, an area mm -hmm. that is exploding at Gustavus. We're, we're so blessed to have a $10 million grant to help us and drive us into the future. But it's the two of you that are leading the charge, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking to you about today. Andrew, as, as we talked about what we might talk about today, one of the things that really kind of sets Gustavus apart in this area is career clusters. Do you want to talk about what that means for someone that maybe hasn't been exposed to it before and, and how that fits into our Center for Career Development? Absolutely. You know, the cluster model is, is very important for our students. We have nine members within the career development team. And we have seven clusters and a specialist that's devoted to each cluster. So as a student comes to Gustavus and they're looking to determine what their major is, they can be associated with a cluster, for example, the business cluster, uh, education, government, social services, arts and communications. Uh, Heather's going to talk about uh, health professions. We have STEM uh, as well in regards to the clusters. And a student can get connected to an individual who's working with employers that are within their cluster. They can do various assessments to help them determine uh, how their cluster and major uh, fit into their overall goals in terms of careers and uh, life goals in general. And it really is a way to help students connect, number one, with what they're going to do with their major, and then number two, to help with networking and communication, uh, obtaining internships, and getting connected in a way that's going to help them uh, be able to have a position in their senior year ready to go when they graduate. Well, I'll tell you that from personal experience, from having my two children graduate from Gustavus and have been blessed with that opportunity to be a part of those career clusters, it made a significant difference mm -hmm. to them. It really got them on a track and involved with people that they really felt like were helping them and directed to and were experts in the area. And I think it's an area, obviously, that as people look at the private college at Gustavus and what they're going to get in return, outcomes are something that are really important. So thanks for all the work that you're doing. Really appreciate it, Andrew and the team. Heather, you want to talk a little bit about, I know that so many students come in here thinking, and now the health professions are such a major part of our world, mm -hmm. especially coming out of pandemic. Can you just get us up to speed on, on the work that you do and how you work with students that are interested in health professions at Gustavus? Yeah, definitely. So health professions, we just this fall became the Office of Health Professions. So we're the Office of Health Professions within the Center for Career Development. And about 30% of our students actually come to Gustavus that are thinking a pre-professional health area. So we focus on those students and help them through that four-year process. And three of the main things that we focus on are prerequisite courses, and then gaining experience and then helping them through the application process. And um, we love our job, it's myself, and I have a colleague, Heidi Selsler Barr. And right now, actually, we're really excited because we are working with our students on January term career explorations. And that is when students go out and shadow different professionals during um, the month of January, earn academic credit. I know a lot of Gusties out there, you probably did this when you were here. Very important for health profession students. and. Anyone out there listening that has a site that would like to partner with us, we are happy to have you partner with us too. Um, but we have a really fun site right now. Um, Heidi Selsler Bar has made a contact in Alaska, and we're actually sending two pre-med students to Alaska for this J-term. So we're really excited about that. Um, and yeah, this morning, 7 a.m., we had an orientation for um, students that are going to be out at sites. And health professions is an awesome area, lots of interest, and... Um, yeah, a great place. Gus Davis supports it very well. Can you talk through, uh, obviously, the health professions has expanded. I mean, yeah. the opportunities. Can you talk about some of the types of careers and professions that students that you work with would pursue after they leave Gus Davis? Yeah, definitely. So um, lots of different areas in health professions. And what I always say is there's a ton of areas that I don't even know about. So that they're, you know, expanding as we go. But the main areas that we focus on are medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, PT, OT, PA, veterinary medicine, optometry, and any of the different new areas that are coming out. One of the areas, Mayo Clinic, is a partner of ours, and they have a program called Surgical First Assistant, and that is somebody that goes and gets a um, 
a degree after Gustavus or a certification to help with a surgeon. And that's an area that we've really seen start to increase. Um, we've sent a lot of Gusties there. So lots of areas in healthcare, um, research. Um, Jill, my colleague, does the STEM. And yeah, looking at different partnerships at Mayo. Mayo's an awesome partner for Gustavus. Uh, I, I, that is so exciting. Obviously, we're close to Mayo. It's great mm -hmm. to have a great contact. I know, Andrew, that the last 18 months have been challenging for everybody, but your team really dug in and connected with students virtually. You want to talk a little bit about that and how your team approached the challenges of not being on campus and students maybe not being able to come into the office because the feedback I was getting from those students is that they didn't miss a beat and that you all were right on top of it. Can you talk about that here in our last minute and a half? Absolutely. We'd be glad to. You know, during the, the beginning of the pandemic, just like uh, many other areas on campus, we were looking at how to transition to online services, and we were able to, one thing we learned is that students uh, were very accepting of virtual appointments. Um, that is something that has continued and is still ongoing. Uh, students have a choice now whether to do an in-person appointment or virtual appointments. So our staff members were able to keep it going. We're able to continue to communicate with students um, through virtual means, and we found that that's been very helpful uh, and has helped them to. We have the we actually have increased the number of appointments we've been doing uh, over the last year. Or so uh, you know we're going to continue to do that and offer those services to students. Fantastic. You know, I mean, there are so many parts. We don't have time in the seven minutes here to talk about all the work that you're doing. We're going to talk with Julie Rudolph later today about the mentoring program. Yes. I know internships are a really key part. You touched on that, Heather. Um, and, and I think that as people look at a private college education these days, one of the things parents and students are anticipating is, how am I going to be prepared when I leave Gustavus to go out and make my life count? And, and you all are both of you are playing such an important role there. Um, I want to say thank you for that because it, it is just, the, we always used to think that you would come to Gustavus and get this great education and then you'd go out and it would work out, right? 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 Exactly. And things would be yeah. there. But our world has changed. And now we have to be very specifically connected and have networks. And I know that that's really, really important. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Our, I know our students are really grateful. And I would just like to say to you all that if you have questions about careers at Gustavus, we hope that you will reach out to these two because they would love to talk to you. Go to the Gustavus website, type in their name, Heather Banks, Andrew Costin, and they will respond to you and they would love to talk to you about career and the Center for Career Development at Gustavus. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back with you again shortly. Hi, everybody. I am Tane Danger. It's Give to Gus Davis Day. I've actually been doing Give to Gus Davis Day for several years. The last two years I've been here, we've been inside the construction of the Nobel Hall of Science, which is now actually like complete look at this thing it looks beautiful from here and so i wanted to ask somebody about what this has all been like i have the absolute best person to talk to not you gus gus is the best i'm gonna know you're great but gus you're an expert in all these things so i don't know gus we should walk and talk and can you tell me a little bit about nobel here it's um it's been under construction for several years right yeah i know and do you, do you understand what? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, it's been under construction for several years. Gus has done a lot of tours on uh -huh. campus oh. and been accompanying that. And for the past several summers, it's been a construction construction zone, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so, yeah, what does it look like out here but until relatively recently? A bunch of fences have been out here, a lot of a big construction zone. Just something you'd expect. A lot of noise, dirt. Yeah, the dirt gets in your hair, I know. I know, it's no good. And But it's looking beautiful now. I mean, can you just tell me a little bit about what it means to like have this finished and done now? It's so good. It's awesome. It's wonderful. The classrooms look really good and it offers a good study space for students. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And I, I, there's this cool part here, if we can pan over, like this is where the old Nobel meets the new Nobel. It seems there's some like amazing metaphor there, right? Of like the past and the future. And I know you're like a poet, uh, Gus. So if you can just give us like your favorite like analogy. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Gustavo celebrates the past and the present here on campus. So alumni come and visit all the time and Old Nobel is still here, but we're trying to make it better for the students who are here now. And so it's just kind of a bridge, almost literal, literally. Bridge, that's beautiful. I love it, Gus, you're a poet, that's fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna ask you something totally unrelated, but it's just like a selfish desire of mine, which is, uh, people may or may not know, I uh, was uh, integral, I founded the improv comedy company, because it was Linus. So, Gus, I don't know, do you know anything about Linus and how it's doing now? Absolutely, Gus is so excited about Linus. Gus loves Linus. It's his favorite thing to do on Friday or Saturday nights. Linus at Ninus, and you like it because you're a lion, and it's Linus, you know? And it, they do short form improv, which is a bunch of games, and Gus loves to play, so. Gus, you, uh, you are a poet and a scholar, and I am so grateful for this time that we had together. I don't know, any last things that you wanna just leave people with on this Give to Gustavus Day you want them to know? Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for seeing our wonderful campus and give some money so we can make more new Nobels in the yeah. future. We gotta make several new Nobels. So thank you for making the pitch so directly. Thank you very much for being our fabulous interpreter. All right, it's Give to Gustavus Day. Uh, new Nobel, it's beautiful. Linus is really fun. All right, we'll see you soon. I don't know why I have this pumpkin, but <laughs> I think that's wonderful. funny. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Thomas Young and I'm back here with President Rebecca Bergman and uh, for the last segment uh, of this morning block, it's been a great start to the day and I think we can see uh, President Bergman, we're approaching $25,000, 23,600. Uh, things are going really, really well uh, and uh, as Tane mentioned, looking for a little help on the West Coast uh, out of Oregon to sort of close out the, the West side of the country. Uh, but a nice, nice start yeah, right in the Midwest. It looks like we have uh, 31 states who have participated. So thank you, including Alaska. Woo Look at that. Uh, sometimes there's a Mikulitz family member there ah. that uh, is key to Alaska. I don't know if that's the case today, but thank you, Alaska. Well, you know what? We have gusties everywhere. So we do. let's turn those states. Well, we're here to talk about something quite fun, aren't we? Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Show the World campaign. That's right. It uh, is a comprehensive campaign. Hey, you what does that mean? <laughs> comprehensive campaign? Comprehensive campaign, uh, President Bergman, means that during the period of the campaign, absolutely every gift, every pledge, and every documented estate plan gets included in that total. It's a way for Gustavus to really celebrate all of the various ways that folks share uh, in their gifts, financial gifts to the college. That's right. And we've set a pretty big goal, $225 million in this campaign. Wow. <laughs> and how are we doing so far, Tom? We are quickly approaching $200 million. And uh, this is, uh, like most situations, the largest campaign uh, in the college's history. It's also the third, really, in a series of campaigns. You know, we, huh. did, we did the 150th anniversary campaign, which was $150 million. And our gusties uh, shared generously by committing about $174 million. And the one before that was $100 million, and we got to $105 million. We have a track record of successful campaigns. It's really, really exciting. And every dollar that's given is put towards educating our students, which is our focus, always our focus. So we look for some strategic priorities. One of them is student scholarships. Uh, another one is student engagement in things like the Career Center, which you just heard about uh, a few minutes ago. And of course, we always look to build the Gustavus Endowment. Where are we at on the endowment, huh? Yeah, I just want to say we, we did a beautiful sort of double dip, if you will, when you mentioned the Career Center because an endowment, mm -hmm. we secured and received a very generous $10 million commitment to the endowment for the Career Center, which has helped Andrew build the team and the programming that they talked about to provide a, a, a four-year 
step-by-step opportunity for our students to both uh, have their great Gustavus education, but then also prepare them to, to move on to the life after they're here at Gustavus. And then you've talked about, uh, and TK and Brownie talked about, and we saw uh, some video on Nobel Hall of Science. Uh, often in a campaign, you have a big capital project. Uh, and so, I know yeah, you're really exactly. excited about that one, especially as a scientist. So, you know, a scientist at heart, it was really fun for us to close out the fundraising for Nobel. The tail end of that fundraising was in this comprehensive campaign, and now we've turned our attention to fundraising for the Lund Center. And, boy, we're more than halfway there, and mm -hmm. we're working towards complete uh, funding for a big facelift in in Lund. Yeah, the, the, I think we've got a, a, a brilliant strategy from the board and the leadership of the college that um, we feel very comfortable with the resources that the college has borrowed to finish Nobel Hall of Science, for right. instance. But we've said, hey, let's try to do these capital projects uh, out of donations uh, as part of these campaigns. So the renovation of Anderson, and you just had education was That's here. Right, yeah. uh, the Anderson building was renovated from top to bottom, stem to stern, from gifts largely from current board members and past board members. And then we turned to the renovation and expansion of Lund Center, a $60 million project. Our goal is to do that completely out of donations. Uh, we're well up over halfway on that project. And as Tom Brown mentioned, we've got uh, uh, now the interior renovation uh, of the current building and then the big f uh, uh, ending with the new field house, 100 yards long by 50 yards wide, a spectacular opportunity for us to, to cap that project off uh, with the last $30 million of fundraising. So these all get rolled up in campaigns and an opportunity That's for right. you to be out and talking to alums and yeah, uh, so about the vision of the college. The w wonderful thing about COVID is that we learned how to connect with alumni on Zoom, but boy, now it's been nice that we are starting to be able to get out to interact with our alumni and our good friends of the college, those uh, folks who care about what's happening here on campus. So we look forward to coming to visit with you all over the United States and beyond. So yeah, we're, um, we're in good shape. Things are moving along nicely. We expect to celebrate the successful conclusion of the campaign next year, and we'll probably do that at several different uh, stops well, along the way. Well, there's never enough opportunities to celebrate uh, with our good friends of the college. So yeah, we look forward to that. So why don't we wrap up uh, with our last video of this morning segment in something that was made possible through campaign gifts, and that is the new Rob and Judy uh, Gardner Laboratory Theater. Why don't we go and see what Tane was up to there? I can only imagine. Oh, yeah. Hi, I am Tane Danger. And I'm here with T. We uh, we get to talk like every year. I feel <laughs> like it's very fun because I like love coming to these theater spaces. Uh, but remind me actually exactly what your title is because like every time you're doing something new, I feel like right. My title has changed a lot over the years. So currently, I am the lighting and sound designer and a continuing instructor. That's very cool. And we are in this brand new beautiful uh, laboratory theater. The Rob and Judy Gardner Laboratory Theater. And we have done one production with an audience. One. One. Just one. That's very cool. We're, we're going for number two. Number two. And that's what is set up right now? That is the misanthrope, the one that we have set up now. The misanthrope. And so we'll walk and talk a little bit about this. But I don't know if we can just do a shot of like, uh, you said you're I like that you say, oh, I'm the lighting person, and it's like, you just really were like, if we're going to do a show, we're going to do all the lighting. Well, yeah. Um, why have one chandelier when you could have 28? Yeah. Um, we're hopefully getting a couple more. Really? Uh, but you are seeing 28 of them working. Is, like, the um, Mankato Menards, like, cleaned out right now? or No, but the Habitat for Humanity Restore is. There you go. <laughs> we're, we're making deals with them. That's so. awesome. So, I don't know. Tell me about, like, what the vision for this was. Like, how did this come about? 
Uh, sure. So the misanthrope takes place in 1660 in the real world, but we're going to bend it up a little bit. So um, we start out getting a feeling of that, but we change into something a little more modern. So there's also LED lights and TVs and lots of craziness. That's fun. Um, so yeah, we're expecting it to be fun and exciting and a little more modern twist on a show that is quite old. Yeah. So, it, I, it should be exciting. And, I mean, you you can see from here that there's Christmas tree lights up. Um, yeah. There's a wedding that's going to happen, and we're we're going all out for it. That is so cool. I mean, uh, you know, I've like obviously spent a lot of time like in theaters and and I have so much respect for like, people who actually <laughs> who actually have real skills. Uh, you know, like <laughs> lighting and yeah. sound and design and things like that. But uh, I what what does it take to put something like this together? When did you start? How many students and things are involved? Sure, it, it takes an army, that's that's for sure. Um, we started talking about this show last school year. Okay. Um, so before we end, um, we have a 10 week design process and then we work our way all the way to, um, at the end of 10 weeks of, of figuring and thinking and over summer we skip some weeks and add some space in. Sure. Um, then we, we get to the part where we build it. We put it in, we start building the set that's below us, we'll see it when we go around the other side. Um, and we, we start getting it all together. I have about 12 students who work for me. Wow. There's probably about 20 in the scene shop. I think there's 30 in the costume shop. There are there are over 100 students involved in every production we do. Wow, that's wild. I mean, I kind of want to keep walking because I've never gotten to be up here right now. This is the cat. I live up here. You, I know. To you, you're just like, what do you mean? This is just home. Uh, but for most folks, like, oh, we're on the catwalk. We're like yep. up above everything right now. Uh, this space, you already said, uh, the Rob Judy Gardner Laboratory Theater, yep. and this is only the second production. Can you just tell us a little bit about, again, for folks who haven't been here before, like what is amazing and wonderful about this space that as a new wonderful addition to our theater department here? Sure. Um, so one of the things that's really exciting is that it's an additional space to work in, yeah. which is something our department has really needed. Um, but what's really exciting about this space is it's completely flexible. Yeah. So if you look down, and I'm going to point the camera over there, there's flexible seating over under the chandeliers on the end there. That seating is completely movable. Those are foldable chairs that are comfortable, the most important factor. Um, the first show that we did in here was in fact a proscenium type stage where the stage was actually currently under where we're currently standing. So the seats were on that side. Uh. Now we've rotated it over. So we have a longer stage this way um, and we can go into the round. We can do any configuration we want. Everything is made super flexible and even the lighting and sound equipment is made flexible so that we can take the lighting and sound boards down to the main deck we can work from there and then we can bring them back up and all the equipment will keep working and there's places you can just plug it in downstairs. That Lots of easy, convenient, take it down the elevator, plug it in, you're good to go. And I've got to imagine that like for students, that's like really exciting, right? It, like it's exciting for me. It's really yeah, exciting, it's exciting for them. <laughs> yeah, because like now all of a sudden you can you've got a blank canvas that you can yep. do just about anything on. With lots of LED lights, all new light fixtures, all new sound equipment, all new lighting equipment, dressing rooms and and scene shops and everything, just all new toys. Yeah. It's, is, it is really exciting. There it got a little tiring on opening packages, but then you think about how how are you going to use it? All? I'm just, so. <laughs> can I say that you're like the child on Christmas morning that's like, oh, I'm tired of opening presents right now. There's so like, many. There's so many. But now we get to play with it. And we, I mean, we took that break, but we're back and now it feels more like normal that we're, we're getting in there. We're, we, we were focusing lights earlier today. You, you came after we finished that. So yeah. the show is coming along and it's getting close. Yeah. And that's, that's super exciting. It is. Uh, yeah. I, I went to rehearsal the other night and was laughing, hysterically laughing. I've seen this show already. I've seen them do it, but they were at a whole new level now. Wow. That is fantastic. So. Well, I, I love getting to come in this space because a, it's like getting to see behind the curtain at the Wizard of Oz, like yep. how a lot of this like actually happens. But then also, this is Give to Gustavus Day, and like yep. this 
is an example of the kind of thing that you all are supporting and like what you have made possible in previous years and are making possible right now with gifts that you make. Like these kinds of amazing spaces that are the embodiment of opportunity for young students who are going into this theater space for the first time. So yeah, uh, it is super cool and super wonderful. Thank you so much for the wonderful tour. Sure. Yeah, this is very cool. All right, th thank you all so much uh, for taking this time to watch with us. Again, this is like what you are supporting is this opportunity for people uh, here at Gustavus. Amazing things like this are what you make possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you haven't, now is a really good time to give to Gustavus. All right, this is cool. Can we keep walking? I we can keep walking. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, for this uh, recap of our morning events. I just want to say uh, I have a friend who is engaged in the theater world who was stunned that Gustavus added a black box theater, uh, a laboratory theater. So thanks for your commitment to ensuring that that stayed in that project, because you can see from T how excited she is about and our, our students and faculty. On Everybody's that, so. excited about the laboratory theater, and uh, we're coming up on uh, their show. So yep. yeah, tickets are available. It's a spectacular space. If you have a chance to come down and, and see something there, uh, the students love it. It's it's just a beautiful addition. And it's uh, so to flexible. You know, yeah. it, it, it can it, every time you go in there, there's something new set up. So yeah, every time uh, you check it out, you'll see some new set up in there. Enjoy. So we're uh, we're thinking about uh, bringing this morning block to a close, and then we're going to see you again at noon. But we're we're kind of stalling almost. Oh. We just went up in over $30,000. Thank you, whoever just made a gift. That's fantastic. We were hoping we could end on a high note uh, as, as we wrap up the morning session uh, uh, on our way to our, our ultimate goal by the time we get to the end of the night of $500,000. We're on pace. We're on track. Um, and then, President Bergman, I see we've got a little bit of work to do in that, uh, what do we want to call it, western, northwestern yeah. part of the country is a little empty. It yeah, there's a few states that need to flip here. So let's get going, Gusties. And we got uh, 19 Gusties to go to fip, flip that $50,000 wow. challenge. And then I don't want to start in this early, but there's always one or two states that seem to want to mm. kind of wait to the end. You don't want to be that state. Uh, uh, we, we'd love to see, for instance, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana uh, flipped by the yeah. time we come back uh, uh, for the lunch hour. And it's almost time to wake up in Hawaii. So maybe we'll get Hawaii over the next two hours. And if you need me to go and get oh, that gift personally, I'd be happy to go thought. do it. <laughs> Hey, can we take a quick look at progress on our international commitments? Because if I had to guess, I might think Logan Bosey was involved uh, mm. with a gift from Norway uh, or whoever else it was. And then Thank we you. also have Malaysia. Uh, just fun fantastic. Fun to see that. Uh, and we've had uh, Japan, Australia, India, and Spain is new to me. Uh, so that's great to see. Uh, welcome, Sweden and United Kingdom, France. Just terrific. So I think that puts us at eight, is it, out of ten? Uh, and we flip another $10,000 challenge uh, when we get our 10th uh, country there. There we go. Thank you, Gusties. We'll Th be back in two, two hours. hours. We'll see you at noon. We'll see you noon. then. Thanks.